Before understanding the LA spread pattern in DSB, let's explore the behavior of liquids or fluids when injected into confined spaces, surfaces, or tunnels. When injected into a tubular structure, the liquid naturally disperses evenly, occupying the entire volume of the tube if sufficient volume is available. If this tube is linked to a piston at the top, the fluid introduced into the piston chamber initially fills the lower section of the piston and then progresses into the connected tube. By introducing a partition within the tube, the liquid injected into the piston will be distributed uniformly on both sides of the partition. However, if an obstacle is introduced on one side of the partition, the injected liquid will preferentially distribute more on the unobstructed side due to the path of least resistance. As liquid fills the tube during the initial injection, subsequent injections into the partition tube will prompt the liquid to flow towards the area of least resistance, typically towards any available vent or opening. If we extrapolate the same concepts, we can understand the possible local anesthetic spread pattern of DSB. The first injection of DSB in the distal femoral triangle directly targets the saphenous nerve and nerve to the vastus medialis. The initial injection volume primarily occupies the distal femoral triangle area. Consequently, some portion of the drug disperses proximally within the femoral triangle, while another fraction enters the adductor canal alongside the femoral vessels. The majority of the drug flows toward the area of least resistance, progressing distally beneath the sartorius muscle but above the VAM. Spread within the femoral triangle region directly involves the saphenous nerve and nerve to vastus medialis, along with the medial portion of the peripatellar plexus, due to proximal dispersion. Whereas, distal spread above the VAM involves the subsartorial plexus. During the second injection of DSB, the spread pattern of the first injection can be visualized under ultrasound. The remaining volume of the adductor canal is predominantly filled by delivering LA paravascularly beneath the VAM. Any excess volume subsequently passes through the adductor hiatus, extending into the popliteal region to involve the popliteal plexus. Therefore, the combined effect of both injections can effectively target all necessary procedure-specific innervations when administered in the correct sequence and volumes. Such spread pattern results in sensory blockade over the anteromedial aspect of the knee up to the tibial tuberosity, medial retinacular complex, and intraarticular region with the exception of the skin over the anterolateral aspect of the knee, which is supplied by the lateral half of peripatellar plexus and posterior aspect of the knee which is supplied by the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve of the thigh.